A presidential election is fast approaching, and the U.S. Postal Service recently told 46 states and the District of Columbia that it can't guarantee that everyone who cast their vote by mail this year will see their ballots counted. This is a full-scale emergency that puts millions of votes at risk, perhaps as many as 160 million ballots in states where the threat of rejection is highest. So why is this happening? Your local post office, that familiar little institution down the street from you, has become a political football. It's in play, not only because its operations have been long troubled, but also it's an election year. Mail-in balloting is going to be a big way for voters to weigh in this year. In a pandemic, they're staying at home. They're going to rely on sending in absentee ballots. And the Postal Service is going to be a hub for all of that. That makes it important to the White House, to Congress, and to voters. For as storied and familiar as the post office is, a lot of people don't really understand how vast it is. It employs over 500,000 people. And it essentially is the biggest retail operation in the United States. President Trump has had a long-standing interest in the Postal Service. Earlier in the spring, when federal aid for the Postal Service was in play, he tried to get the Postal Service to change the way it did business before he released the aid. Now, as we come into the political election year, and of course, election day in November, there's an issue here about whether or not President Trump is trying to weaponize the Postal Service to serve his electoral interests. He's put a new postmaster general in charge, Louis DeJoy. Louis DeJoy is the first postmaster general in more than 20 years who has actually no experience working inside the Postal Service itself. The Trump administration's push to weaponize the Postal Service reads like a ward politics handbook from the 1890s. Mail sorting machines and plain old shelving are reportedly being removed from post offices, making mail sorting and delivery more difficult. Overtime hours have been cut, drastically slowing down delivery times. And in some locations, such as Portland and Eugene, Oregon, mailboxes are being carted away from sidewalks. The Postal Service says that last move is only meant to reduce clustering, but who knows? While Postmaster General Louis DeJoy has said he is independent of Trump, the Washington Post reported that he met with the president in the Oval Office last week ahead of an important meeting with congressional leaders about how the Postal Service is being managed. The net effect of all this recently is to have drastically slowed down mail delivery. And in an election year, the consequences of that could be grave. Every ballot, even if it's postmarked prior to election day, in most states, if it arrives after election day, it won't be counted. One of the things that has raised people's antennas is since early in the year, President Trump and Attorney General William Barr have repeatedly described mail-in balloting and mail-in voting as riddled with fraud, but there's actually no evidence that it's ever been the case. There's been some inefficiencies around it, but there's a number of states that have had longstanding success with mail-in voting. The issue that's left hanging out there in all of this is, well, then what's to be done? The Postal Service is overseen by the executive branch. Congress obviously has an ability to monitor its operations, but up to this point, the most that's really happened is that Congress has sent angry letters to the Postal Service demanding answers from Louis DeJoy. However, in recent days, some more significant steps have taken place. Congress has asked the Post Office's Inspector General to begin reviewing some of Louis DeJoy's recent steps, and Congress itself has decided to hold a hearing on September 17th. An Inspector General review is nice. Letters are good. But at the end of the day, none of those things will do much to really stop what's happening right now. Fortunately, a number of state attorneys general are considering suing the Trump administration for trying to subvert local election laws through the Postal Service. But again, it's unclear if courts can move quickly enough to have an impact. And if they can't, there will be consequences on Election Day. That makes the stakes in this battle over the Postal Service and mail-in balloting extraordinarily high, like everything in the Trump era. The boundaries of the law, ethics, and executive power are all being tested in ways no one's really experienced before, but which nobody should tolerate, especially voters.